Hi, Micha. Our, Hello, Axel. Our third session today. And yes. we will speak about testing. Testing. Why testing? testing? Yeah. Yeah. Why is testing so important? Yeah, actually, it's not important. I don't write tests. Tests are for people who write bugs. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, actually, no, actually, it is important because, you know, Software is about complex systems and software has many parts and there are lots of interdependencies between the components in a software. And that's why it's necessary to have at least a check that actually the software is working okay. And it's not that the software is starting, you start the software and then you hope that it's working, but you also have to verify it. That's the idea. But Micha, this is what you are doing all the time. You are checking and testing all the time. Indeed, but there's also a methodology behind it and there's also certain tools behind that. Normally, you start writing a program and the program gets more and more complex. And of course, you have the development cycle and you develop something and you feature for your software and you test it. But it means you simply run the software and you see, okay, it's working and then, okay, you are fine to ship it. But of course, if the software gets a certain level of complexity, then it's not possible to individually test everything. And that's why you have to automate the whole process at a certain point, because you can't check every possibility and every outcome of the program. You use a tool for that? Yes, there are tools for that. But first of all, the method is important. You write a software and you have one executable file that you can start, like your app. And... This is not what a test is. So basically the test is another executable that you can start and this tests certain features and components of your software. For each component in the software, you have a test and each test tests certain inputs and certain features and certain branches. That's basically the idea. And... The methodology that's also called test-driven development, that's the hot term for that, that's basically that you, instead of starting writing the software first, the main executable, which only the customer will see, you start with these tiny executables that contain the tests, and then you can start writing your module. And there are also tools for that. To answer your question, there's, for instance, the Qt framework, there's Google tests, there's also C tests, there's boost tests. If we look at the C++ world, of course, in Java, there's JUnit. So each programming language more or less has its own testing framework. And yeah, you have basically these tiny testing modules that you or test executables that you're running and those check if the requirements on your software are actually fulfilled and all the conditions are checked. And if the tests are running successfully, then you can be sure that your main executable is also running. Okay. Uh, more or less bug free. May I ask you, which is the tool you are using mainly? Depends a bit on the environment. So for instance, if I'm working with Qt, then I usually use the Qt test framework. And if I'm using Rust, then there is an embedded testing framework integrated, which is pretty cool that testing is very tight together with the language somehow that you can basically in each Rust module below the module, you can write down your tests easily and start them with the cargo build tool. And then for some customers, I also use Google test. So this is the main I'm using. Yeah. Okay, fine. And what message do you want to send to your customers today? Important is that Often customers and I set up the test environment for them and then I look after a couple of months, I come back and then I see, okay, that the tests are not running anymore that we set up together and or they are totally neglected. Sometimes they are disabled in the build system, so they are not built at all and they are completely ignored because they only focus on the actual app that is running. And of course, they have also limited resources, time and money, right? And they think, okay, it's not worth to look at the test. We have to ship the app as fast as possible. But I don't think that's a good approach because if you have working tests, you can catch bugs earlier and it saves you more money in the end. So I would consider that writing tests is super important. It saves money in the end. And the thing is, we're talking about unit tests here. And it's also a good way of documenting your source code. When you write down a test, you will see how you use 
the API, though, to the programming interface. Software is about interfaces, right? And you will see how you use your interfaces that you have written. You can have a nice documentation of actually how you use your own software. And this helps you a lot to understand your code. And you will easily start to modularize your code intuitively because you have to split down everything in tests anyway. So I've seen in some customers, they have a big, big class developed, like, 10,000 lines of code, and this kind of code is untestable, which would not have happened if you started with the tests up front, and then you start modulize your code immediately, and this can save you a lot of hassle in the end if you ship your software. So this is the main message. So write tests okay. and modulize your software, and don't think that tests are an obstacle. It's actually a helpful tool. Yeah. Okay, this is the message for today. So uh... Yes. Testing is important. Yes. Fine. So, okay, that's for this week. And next week we have our next topic. Which one? Well, we will see something around Qt, Lint, testing. Or maybe if we have someone in the audience who has a topic which someone thinks we or he or she we should discuss, then you yes. can write down a comment below. And then maybe we can discuss this topic as well. This is a perfect idea. So, see you next week. See you. Bye-bye. Yeah.